In Lumia 9, moving objects has also gotten easier. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some strategies for making better selections. We're going to explore making precise moves and rotations. And then we're going to review some of the keyboard shortcuts that are going to save you a ton of time. Let's get to it. All right, so let's navigate over to our dining room table and talk about making selections. All right, so now down here on my object tab, you can see that we have the select tool. I'm going to click it. Also take note that the select tool has a keyboard shortcut, that's M. All right, now as soon as I bring my cursor off of that select tool icon, look what happens. We start highlighting these different objects. This is something that's new in Lumion 9. I can select an object by either clicking on its node, just like before, or I can actually hover on the object and click, and then that'll select it as well. So just like before, we can hold control and we can click and add objects to the selection. All right, and then to deselect, we can clear our selection by clicking on deselect all. All right, so now uh, take note too that we are on the select tool and over here, we're on the select all categories. These buttons over here become like filters, just like they were for the place tool. We're not going to get off of this uh, select all categories just yet though. Let me show you what happens when I create a window selection. All right, so if I hold control and I click and drag, I can select a bunch of these different objects, but look what happened. See, I selected everything at the table, but then also I selected all these trees out here too. So that's really not ideal that I have all those selected. That's not a clean selection. So let's deselect that, move back inside, and take a look at how we can use these filters to make better selections. So rather than having select all categories on, I'm gonna choose indoor. This way, when I move my cursor around, you can see that it's only selecting objects from the indoor collection. So those are the only nodes that I'm gonna see. And this is gonna make it much easier for me to make a window selection around this kind of grouping of objects and grab only what I want. I can tell you too that navigating to a view that is strategic for what you're working on, that's another strategy I definitely recommend. So uh, if I kind of uh, navigate to a better view here, you know, like from above at this table, this would be a much better place for me to make a window selection, kind of looking straight down on that table. But uh, so keep that in mind, navigate to a view that is strategic for what you're, for what you're working on. All right, and I can click deselect all. All right, so now let's take a look at modifying or moving and deleting these different objects. All right, so to start off, I'm gonna select, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna just hit delete and I can hover on a chair. I have to click on the node to delete it. If I just click on the chair, nothing really happens there. I have to actually click on the node to delete it. I suppose that's like a fail safe. If I wanna make multiple selections, I can do that. I can kind of click on several, remember hold control, and then move over to the delete tool and then click on one node and that will delete both of those chairs. All right, so that's how we delete objects. Now, remember the select tool, this is really your move tool as well. I'm gonna hit M. When I click the M key, this bounces me over to the select tool and which is in turn my move tool. So let's take a look at moving this chair. All right, so when I click and drag, I can move this chair around and it's just kind of floating around and it's hovering up onto the table when I move in that direction. So let me kind of change my view so you can see that. As I'm moving around, I can hop up on there. If I hold shift, that's gonna constrain the move to be only on that plane that it started. So that's kind of a handy shortcut. All right, so then um, all these shortcuts over here, you know, always keep your eye on this. Whenever you're moving around on different tools, there's all these different shortcuts. So I just showed you um, moving with shift, but we can also constrain on an axis. So check this out. If I've kind of tucked this chair in under the table and kind of scoot over like that. All right, so if I wanna click and drag and move this and scoot it straight in say, I can click on the Z, I'm sorry, hold down the Z button, and that's gonna constrain it on that Z axis. I can also hold the X button, and that'll constrain me on the X axis. So for now, 
I'm going to use the Z axis, kind of tuck that chair in, and then finish that move. And now I'm going to do another move. And this one, I'm going to use a move, and I'm going to hold Alt to make a copy, and I'm going to hold X to constrain it on axis, like that. All right, so let's do that again. So for this one, I'm going to move it, I'm going to hold Alt, and I'm going to hold X. And that's going to make a copy of the chair and constrain it on the X axis. And then it gets pretty easy after that. I can do it one more time. So this way, I know that everything has been moved and copied perfectly and precisely right along that X axis. Looking good. Okay, so now let's hop outside for just a moment and take a look at another kind of, um, this is what we call inferences in SketchUp, but uh, we're, we're gonna look at one of these like shortcuts, uh, another one of these kind of cool shortcuts that we have. Uh, it's gonna save you a ton of time. All right, so I'm on the Move tool, and in order for me to select a car or to modify a car in any way, I need to be on either the All Categories, which you know kind of gets to be a little bit of a mess. There's a lot going on there. Uh, what's kind of cool is that I can kind of hover on that car and click it, and then that'll at least make the uh, node more visible. But I think a better way to work on the cars is to act, is to filter out just the transport collection. See, now I can easily grab just that node, and let me just move this out here for just a moment. All right, take a look at what's happening. So what's going on here is that our car is kind of melted into the road. So the tires are kind of digging in. And let's see, I, I can even make this, uh, if we just move it maybe even a little bit further over here, you can really see what's happening. The, the back wheels are buried, the front wheels are floating. Watch this though. If I, as I'm moving, if I hold the F key, look what happens. It, it reorients itself. It kind of, um, it, it, it matches the, the wheels to the road. That's a really convenient shortcut when you're modifying cars. So keep that in mind. Hold the F key. Again, all of these shortcuts are available over here. So that's conform to model. So holding F when you're placing a car will make it snap to the terrain. So uh, let me show you another example of that. As I go up this hill here and hold F, you can kind of see that it's adjusting to that terrain. And then as I come down, it's adjusted to the road. Cool. All right. All right, so for the time being, I'm gonna put our car back in the driveway. And as I'm doing that, I'm gonna hold F and then park that thing right in the driveway. It reorients. Let's head back over to our lounge chair area. Take a look at these lounge chairs. You can see that they're kind of rotated off axis. That's fine, that's probably how they would be, but I wanna show you how to get them back on axis. There's a new uh, feature where we can kind of hover on a surface and, uh, and align the rotation of an object to a surface. So, in order to do that, I need to be on my rotate tool, and you can see that there is a keyboard shortcut for that, and it's R. So I'll just hit R, because I like to use keyboard shortcuts. I know that makes me way faster. All right, and then in order for me to modify this, this lounge chair, I'm gonna need to be on the outdoor collection. That's where that is. So if you can't find the node, you can always just go to select all categories. You, know, you can get around all these different nodes and you'll, you'll find what you need. So um, that's kind of the fail safe, but I do know that this lounge chair is part of outdoor, so that makes it kind of easy for me to work on just this one piece here. All right, so then with my rotate tool active, I'm gonna click and drag. All right, now as I'm clicking and dragging, I could either kind of snap to this uh, north, south, east, west. You can see those axes. If I hold shift, that's gonna kind of override that uh, snapping. Now here's the other thing I can do, is if I hold F. See how we get that little arrow and that dotted line? All I need to do now is put that arrow and dotted line on a surface and see how it reoriented itself kind of away from that surface like that? So there's one surface. Uh, let's see if I can find another. You know, oftentimes I don't even have to navigate. Like if I want the chair to face this direction, I can put my cursor on that little surface right there and get it to face over there. And then I can let go of my mouse, click and drag, and we're good to go. So let's do it again. I wanna show you and make sure that makes all the sense in the world here. So as I'm rotating this chair, here's the issue. 
I want to rotate it and I want it to be perfectly aligned to a specific surface. So if I hold F, I get this kind of uh, dotted line and arrow, and then I can put my cursor on this window, and that's going to perfectly rotate that thing around. And I can let go of my click and drag, and we're good to go. All right, I've got one more trick for you, and I'm going to show you on this light that we placed over the dining room table. We're going to kind of bring a few different skills together. All right, so in order to, to work on or, or to move and modify my lights, I do need to have my lights and utilities uh, collection active. Now, I always like to hit M. That's going to bring me back to my, my uh, select tool or, or my move tool. All right, we do have these different move up, uh, move horizontal, but I think I would rather just hold H, and that's going to adjust my height. All right, so that's how we can kind of move lights around. So let's take a look now at how we can like add a few different lights in here by moving and copying and uh, and do that in a strategic way. So first off, I do want to move navigate to a view that is strategic for what I'm working on. All right. And then I'm going to go to my move tool. So I hit M and you see how that bounced over to move free. All right. So now what I can do, I can click and drag and hold alt and I can also hold X and see that's going to move in the X direction over here. And when I let go, I now have my two lights. I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to hold uh, click and drag, hold Alt to make a copy, and X to copy on that axis, and copy one more down the way. There we go. So that's how you can kind of work with these different objects uh, without having to make a bunch of one-off clicks and, and moves. So you're not moving it to the left and reorienting your view and moving it to the right. Definitely these shortcuts are, uh, keyboard shortcuts are, are critical for moving fast in build mode. So you can see that with Lumion 9, it's much easier to move, rotate, copy, and modify objects within your scene. Now, a piece of advice for you, make sure that you're using those keyboard shortcuts. That is what will make you fast. And if you can't remember them, don't worry, they're always listed on the right side of your screen. So for whatever tool is active, all of the keyboard shortcuts are listed over there. Just put your mouse over, Hover on them and you'll get your reminder. Now, uh, be patient, force yourself to use those keyboard shortcuts. That's what will make you fast. In the next tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the advanced options in the object properties dialog. I'll see you in there.